Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about outliers. Outliers are quite common in real world data sets. Therefore, if you're processing a data, you need to understand how to deal with outliers. This video would cover everything about outliers, starting with what are outliers, why to perform outlier treatment, choosing appropriate outlier treatment, and most importantly, common mistakes to be avoided when dealing with outliers. This is really important for anybody who's a data science practitioner to understand very well. And finally, we will do hands-on outlier treatment in Python. So if you watch this video completely, you'll not only learn right from scratch what are outliers, but you'll also be in a position to be able to deal with outliers effectively. Let's get started. First of all, what are outliers? So to put it very simply, values in our data which are unusual for a given context are called outliers. Two important words put in bold here are unusual and context. Let's take an example. Let's say in a company, the salary of one employee is many fold more compared to the salaries of the other employees. Is that an outlier? Yes. But we'll also have to look at the context. Context gives us the background. So what if this employee is actually the CEO of the company and the other employees that we are talking about are just the entry level professionals? In that case, it is very much justified. Numerically, this value might seem many fold more or an outlier, but is this justified? Of course, the kind of responsibility and experience that a CEO would have would not be the case with just every other employee. So this leads us to an important conclusion. Outliers are not always bad. They are not always data entry errors. In a real context, you may have values which significantly differ from the rest of the values in a feature, but that doesn't make them a bad record. You just need to deal with them separately. And this is a very important point to understand. Yes, if it is established that these are errors, it is also possible that at times, there is a data entry error. And if that is the case, we may want to deal with it accordingly. But at the same time, we also understand, be it any sector or any domain, there'll always be people who simply outperform the rest of the crowd. And these people might be attaining the values which are seen as outliers. In such cases, we don't want to overwrite them. So with this, we understand the context. But let's understand what is unusual, because this could be quite subjective. What is unusual? Is there a way that we can quantitatively determine unusual observations? So the answer to this is yes, there are certain common quantitative checks that can be performed, but these also might vary from domain to domain. A very common approach to detect outliers is with the help of box plots. In fact, this is the first approach you'd mostly be applying to detect the presence of outliers visually. This is also called Tukey's method. A box plot is a representation of different quartiles in the data. So it divides the data into multiple quartiles like Q1, which is nothing but the 25th percentile, Q2, which is nothing but the median or 50th percentile, and Q3, which is 75th percentile. So the height of the box here is basically the difference between Q3 and Q1, which is also known as IQR or interquartile range. Now, there are definitions associated with when would you declare a value as an outlier? It could be at the lower end or could be at the upper end. The boundaries that we are looking at in general would be Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, which is nothing but Q3 minus Q1 or the middle 50% of the data. So any value that exceeds Q3 plus 1.5 IQR would be called an outline. Likewise, any value which goes below Q1 or the 25th percentile minus 1.5 times IQR, Q3 minus Q1, is again called an outlier. Note that while these are the most commonly used boundaries for most of the statistical analysis, the domain knowledge would still play an important role. With the help of domain knowledge, you would be able to comment a little better if your data by its very existence tends to follow different boundaries. For example, you may consider Q3 plus 3 IQR or Q1 minus 3 IQR instead of 1.5 IQR. But that comes from the domain knowledge. If it's not there, then we in general would be referring to these as the boundaries above which and below which a value is termed as an outlier. So let's understand the occurrence of outliers a little better. Let's talk about the game of basketball. And let's say we have different players. For each of these players, we have captured different attributes like demographic information in the form of age, physical attributes like height, and health-related information or medical history, which would involve past injuries. Now, it is quite possible that for a particular variable, height, you find a specific player who is much taller compared to the rest of the players in the team. And now, based on the height, this player would be called an outlier. For which feature? Just for the height feature. This player might be just about as old as the rest of the players and might have had no or limited injuries just like any other player. But just for one feature, that is height, we have an outlier value corresponding to this player. 
So if we detect outliers by each feature, we call them univariate outliers. Why? Because there is a presence of outlier in one variable. There could be other columns which have outliers, but we are independently identifying or scanning each column for the presence of outliers. These are called univariate outliers. We could also have another scenario. Let's say this is a Cartesian plane starting with the origin 0, 0, and we have all these points on the Cartesian plane. You can see these points attain certain x coordinate values on corresponding to the x axis and certain y values corresponding to the y axis. Now, let's say we have a point here. Will this be called an outlier? Is this something that you see as different from the rest of the values? Answer is yes. Why? Well, not because of the y value. We have many other points which attain this kind of y value or the value of four along the y axis. But the value of x that it has attained here is very unusual. For rest of the data, we never went beyond eight. 8 is the maximum x coordinate that you have. But for this particular point, you see this value is 15. So this looks a lot different compared to the rest of the data points. Likewise, this point here. Now, if you see, this point does not attain an unusual x value because we have other values of x ranging from 2 to 8. So this has got a value as 2. And it has not got an unusual y value as well because in our original data also, you have values up till 12. That still is called an outlier. Why? Because this point by its very location is different from the rest of the points. It's it's not mixing along with these points and has its own identity. So outliers may exist also in a multi-dimensional scenario. When you're looking at multiple variables put together, in this case, we are looking at two variables. And in such cases, the outliers are termed as multivariate outliers. Why? Because we are not looking at just one feature. We are looking at an X coordinate and Y coordinate. And by its very position, this is an outlier and this is also an outlier. Now that we've understood what are the different types of outliers, let's look at why outlier treatment is important. So the main reason is due to the presence of outliers, the general representation or summarization of data becomes difficult. This general representation is essentially what you're looking at when you're dealing with machine learning models. And summarization is something which is very common because we often try to summarize the data. It is practically impossible for us to remember every single raw value. We often try to present our data through summaries. It could be a visual summary or a tabular summary. Let's go back to our example of basketball. And we called out an attribute called height where a particular player was taller compared to the rest of the players. How would this affect the summarization? Let's say we note down the heights of these five players. And you can see everybody here has a different height, but the height of the tallest player is 1.98. And for the remaining players, if you see, the tallest one is 1.65 and the shortest one is 1.5. Now, if we take an average of all these values, the average is 1.66. But if you realize there is no player apart from one player who has actually exceeded 1.66, everyone else is shorter compared to 1.66. So would this be a fair representation for all the players? No, because majority of the players here do not even attain this value. It's just because of one tall player that you're able to get this average. So your summarization has become difficult here. Now let's talk about the general representation, which is what you essentially do in machine learning models. So let's say we have all these points and we try to represent them using a line, which is what we do in regression problems. So if we draw a line like this, maybe this does justice to these points. But due to the presence of this point, which is an outlier, it would no longer remain the way it is right now. Why? Because this line is fit ensuring that it tries to minimize the error corresponding to these points. And of course, this point being so far will have a pretty high error. So what this point will try to do is that it'll try to pull the line towards itself. And as a result, you're losing the general representation, which is true for majority of your points. Just because of one data point, your line is changing its direction because line wants to accommodate this point as well. And in doing so, it is losing the idea of general representation. Imagine if these points were more, like we had a collection of these points, this line would be pulled even further towards these points and that will make the general representation even worse. Outliers influence the general representation and summarization of our data. Now let's move on to performing appropriate outlier treatment. Keep this in mind before we do any treatment. We first need to ascertain whether an outlier is a data entry error or it is a genuine value. If it is a data entry error, then we are still okay with its treatment. But if it is a genuine value, it's an actual occurring value, then you want to be very careful before you treat it. What could be the consequences of overriding a genuine value? Let's say in a bank, they're trying to profile their customers. 
And there is one customer who is extremely rich. His account balance is always pretty high and it does a lot of high value transactions every month. Now, if you see the balance in this customer's account as a pretty high value compared to the rest of the customers and you start doing outlier treatment. Now, if you bring this customer's account balance to the average, which is just about any other customer, this customer suddenly might look a lot poorer without losing even a single dollar. So just because you have modified the data, thinking that this is an outlier and it is a bad value, you're losing the information that's truly represented in the data. It was a genuinely high value and you brought it to an average, making this customer look poor unnecessary. And how would you ascertain that a value is genuine or not? In most of the cases, when you're working on a real business data, you'll have people from the business representation who will be able to help you with these insights. So you should always deliberate before you overwrite an outlier value. Now, what are the common options? Let's say we do not have genuine values and we want to proceed proceed with the treatment of outliers because of errors. Now, what are the options? We may remove the rows containing outliers. If the number of outliers in the overall data are very limited, we may simply choose to remove those rows. But this would not be done if you have more than two or three percent of the data which contains outliers. Second would be you can replace the outlier values with a central tendency like median. Why did we choose median? Because if your data has outliers, mean for that column would not be the right alternative. Median is a central tendency that's not affected by the outliers. Third is try an appropriate transformation. An appropriate transformation on the data does not guarantee elimination of outliers, but reduces the influence of those outlier values. So this might work and we'll discuss some specific cases. Fourth is, which is the most common treatment, that we can modify the outliers as per the feature specific upper and lower permissible limits. The two keys limits that we talked about, Q3 plus 1.5 IQR and Q1 minus 1.5 IQR or any value that you consider fit as per the domain. And fourth, which is the most powerful treatment and least known to people is that you treat the outliers using algorithms. We'll talk about this as well in the hands-on piece. Now, specifically talking about these two options, removing the outlier values, as I said, may not be practical if your data has too many outliers. And transformations do not necessarily treat the outliers completely, but just reduce their influence. So these may not be most effective in most of the cases. Let's focus on method two and method four, why these are also criticized. So let's take an example, a context. We have different employees in a company who have their ages ranging from 22 to 55 years and their work experience ranges anywhere between two to 30 years. Now, if we focus on the experience column alone, let's say we are looking at the first few entries and we have more data, but this is all that we are looking at right now. So you can imagine these values range anywhere from two to 30 years. We don't have the 30 visible here, but that will be somewhere in the data. But somehow we have a value which is quite unusual. If the highest age in our data was 55 years, how can we have an employee with 60 years of experience? Your experience will always be a subset of your age. Experience of an individual can never exceed the age. So this seems like there is a problem. Now, how do we go about treating it? We can treat it with the median, which was the option two, and we can treat it with the upper limit, which was the option four. Let's say we calculate the median which is 14 and the upper limit of the data which is a permissible limit is 30. So we have more data like I said so we would have calculated these using the entire data. So we can conveniently go about replacing this value of 60 with 14 or 30. But while doing that did we really worry about what was the age corresponding to this employee? What if your actual data is like this? So the age of the employee in the database is 23 and we are showing that the experience is 60. That's totally not possible. But is even 14 or 30 as a replacement a feasible representation? The answer is no. A 23-year-old employee cannot have 14 years of experience. In most of the countries, you're not allowed to start working while you're still in your teenage. So 14 would mean this employee had started working at the age of nine. And 30 is of course not possible because a 23-year-old employee cannot have 30 years of experience. So what is the drawback here? In such cases where we talk about dealing with a column all alone, calculating its median or fixing the upper limit or lower limit, we do not consider the existence of other features. Whereas the other features in the data could have some logical connection with the feature for which you're trying to modify an outlier value. So this is a mistake. Is there a way that we can deal with it somewhat smartly? The answer is yes, and we'll see to it in the hands-on piece. In fact, we'll see all five approaches to outlier treatment when we do the hands-on. That's next.